Okay, so now we're quite comfortable with setting up the ribbon spine as well as two antennas there. So everything's working quite nicely. Uh, what we can start to do now is just repeat the same thing but apply it to the rest of his body. And at the start, I was looking at this character and I was going through what things we might do and I was saying, like, we might split this upper body and lower body into two separate spines but it would actually probably make sense to keep this as one continuous spine but with several separate controls so like here we've got this start mid and end control but for the upper body middle of the body and the end will be quite limiting and because all these really all they are is just three joints skinned to a nerve surface if we've got a nerve surface for that ribbon spine starting from the top of his head all the way down his body and all the way to the tip of his tail we could just add more joints to influence that surface so adding more controls so and that way we've got a continuous spine going from start to end so skinning it's going to be a lot easier and connecting this up is going to be a lot easier because it's already connected because it's just one long spine and if you actually look at this character that's basically all he really is there isn't any sort of joint here and even though he's not biologically correct you know snails don't have arms but we have to sort of think about the the biology of the unrealistic ca character so even though he's a cartoony unrealistic we still have to think of how he would work and if we can rig that and convey that through the animation correctly even though he's unrealistic the character's going to look at it and go actually yeah, that works so things like Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, um, even like blobby characters like the the blob of um, Martians, Aliens vs. I can't remember what it's called, Aliens vs. Uh, Aliens vs. Monsters. So that blob, you, he moves like a blob, he's, ca he's completely unrealistic and cartoony, but he moves how you would expect a sticky blob to move. So even though it's an unrealistic character, he moves and he acts like you would expect. So the same with this character, looking at this, it looks like a, a slug, a long, smooth, sort of continuous blob that's just bent up. So we're going to do the spine like that, we're just going to have this long spine that continues all the way through and just bends up. So again, to start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Create, Nerbs Primitive, um, and a plane and I've got the same settings as I had before so I'm just going to create the same nerves plane with five spans and we are going to like with the antennas have more spans so I'm just going to set this to reference we're going to have more spans but to start off with I'm just going to keep five so I can get it into the rough shape of this character so I'm going to scale this right up, move it to the top of his head, and then control vertex, holding down B, middle mouse click. I'm going to get that soft select so I can get that nice smooth curve all the way to the back. So we've got that massive, massive spine. And I could actually match this up. So I'm going to press B to come out of soft select. Match it up with that edge loop there that we can see, that edge that protrudes. just getting that into position and same with the head up here and what I'm actually going to do is with this last one here I'm just going to get the Z axis active and hold down V and vert snap it to that antenna so it's in level level with that antenna now it, it still work if it wasn't level with the antenna, I just want it to be level with the antenna so it matches up so when we start pairing these joints up here they're quite close to each other. 
so it's going to be a lot easier. So I'll just hide the mesh. Look at this surface. And actually, what we could start doing here. So if I just go to the surface, I'm just going to forward progress, rebuild surface. And just before I do that, which what? Oops. Uh, I'm going to go to the U. U set the U to one. Set to linear. Hit apply. Just so we can get rid of the CVs, the spans, in the width of this. So again, we've just got one on either side. And instead of increasing the number of spans, I'm just hit close. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to right click and go to eyes apart. What this means is if I click on an edge and drag it up, because it's adding this red line. And I can hold shift and I can hold and shift create several of these lines and it might be quite hard to see them sometimes but I'll just hit undo and this way I can manually place where I want those trims those extra CVs to be I'm actually going to just get quite a large bulk of them and then we'll just go to um, edit surface um, and insert eyes of palms. Took me a minute to find it there. And then that's just going to convert all those eyes of palms that we've made, those yellow lines we dragged across, into new eyes of palms. Okay, so we can now delete the history on that if we want to. Go back into control, CV, and I could start moving the CVs about again. Now we've increased the resolution of that. So as we increase the resolution, we might want to, you know, increase the bend of this again. Um, some areas we might find down here. There's two that are a bit close together so I'm out to space these out a little bit more bring these down just so they're sort of evenly spaced about Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. How I've got all those joints aligned along here. It's quite evenly spread out how I'd like how I'd like it to be. And if we want we could try rebuild the surface again. Plan it to the V direction. And what we actually want to do is like we did with the antennas we chose an odd number of nine we want to think of this as two separate parts because we're splitting up into two separate controls the upper spine and the lower spine so what we might want to do is think about how that's going to work so we're going to have an upper body control a middle control for the sort of arm slash mouth area for this character and then the bulk of the body control and then another control in the middle and then a control at the end so we've got one, two, three, four, five controls so the way we can think of it is um, we can have the first spine with nine the second spine with nine adding them together will give us eighteen but if we actually think about it because they're sharing that same mid control they're actually set sharing that same joint so we'll just subtract one because that that's duplicated across because it's, it's one spine it's not two duplicate spines so that middle joint 
is going to belong to both the upper body and lower body. So we're going to give it 17. So we'll give another span 17. Hit apply. Okay, and because we place those ice palms manually, we can see that as we give more spans to the top, the top's a bit more dense, so we've got more joints in that area, which is what we want because the bulk of this bottom character um, isn't going to have a lot of deformation compared to the top where we've got the face, the arms and the antennas all in one area. So we need a lot more control up here to separate it between those three different areas. Whereas the bottom of the tail is a lot more bulkier and we can deal with joints being spread further apart. I'm just going to hit D, Control D to duplicate that and again hide that in the temp group just in case we need to go back to it at a later stage. So again, delete the history and freeze transformations. I might just scale that in a little bit. This is within the character. And then again, I'll rename this, so I'll just copy the name again, rib surface. And I'm not going to have a left or right because it's in the middle. And I'm just going to call this back. Back spine actually. Watch so I'll just call it back. So this is the back ribbon. And then again we're just gonna go to the dynamics, end hair, crit hair. And again remember we put seventeen spans, so I'm gonna choose seventeen. Hit apply. And just looking at that we can see where the joint's gonna be placed and I'm quite happy with that. So we can delete the output curves, delete the nucleus and the hair system again. And again, um, I'm going to hold shift to expand all these. Select each curve group as we don't need these anymore. So we're not yet, we're not actually using the dynamic side of that hair system. We're just interested in these follicles really. And then we'll go ahead and rename all these. Okay, so I've just renamed them all follicle, back ribbon, 01, 2, or 017 at the top. And again, working in like a logical order, 01 is starting from the ground, coming all the way up to the character. And let's select them, hit Control G, and I'm just going to group them. Okay, so we're going to continue on and create the joints. So I'm going to grid snap a joint again and hit Control D eight, uh, 16 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And actually, before I do this, I'm just going to look at the rubber joints we used before. Copy the name. So we're checking what the name conventions we've used before just keeping things consistent. So antenna back and again we don't need a left or right for this because it's down the centre. So back ribbon or one. And because we renamed this back ribbon or one, the next one's gonna be back ribbon or two. If I hit control D on this, you can see it's gonna rename it to O2 manually or automatically. So I'm just gonna keep repeating the control D until we've got 17 joints and that way we don't need to rename one new rename them all on its own which would be quite tedious I'll group it GRP paste the name group back uh, JTB N. So now we've got the group, and we're going to go through what we did before, and just take each joint and get constrained to its corresponding ribbon, uh, corresponding follicle. Sorry. So in animation, constraints, parent, 
make sure maintain offset is off and hit apply and O2 just hitting G again and going through every single one of these so I'll just pause the video here and come back when I've constrained these up okay so we've constrained all those I'm going to collapse groups you can see all the joints are in place as we'd expect uh, I'm just going to test the ribbon see we get the nice twist in the joints are following along again so everything's working as expected and we can start to hide some of these now so the two surfaces up here we've got the left and we've got the right and we'll make sure we rename that so we're going to take these two and just have them in the extra to hide so we can get rid of them just hide them for the monks so you don't, don't need to see them and then we'll take the follicles, put them in the extra hide as well, and get the joints and put them in the ribbon joints section. So everything's in its place. We're just not hiding this just yet because we'll need this to do the skinning on. Okay, so we're going to do the same again. Just select these joints, and we're just going to look at the mesh and sort of look at where we want these to be and like we said earlier we've done this to nine so we've got two spines of nine even though it's all one spine continuous we're going to treat it as two spines so we're going to create the controls as two separate spines but it's one spine going throughout so we wanted three joints in between because we created the nine again so we've got one two three the next joint one two three the next joint one two three the next joint one two three and the last joint and we can see that they're in the areas that we wanted because we can see the one down here is in the bulky area in the middle of that sort of tail and one right at the end and what I'm actually going to do is deselect this one and select the one further up so they don't hatch they don't have to be even we don't have to have an even amount of joints in between these we did for the antenna because we want an even amount of control throughout that antenna but for this um upper body we actually want these to be quite in line with the arms so having the control here will make more sense because rotating this control will keep the arms level with the upper body whereas having the control down here might not make as much sense because we're rotating below and also this is closer to the mouth so it's going to be a lot easier to work with that okay so with these selected I'm just going to hit control D shift P to unparent go increase the radius again to 1.5 get them quite larger actually I'm going to bump this up to 2 and expand all these again to expose those constraints that were duplicated along with it and just delete them. And at this point, once we've got these joints here, I'm just going to select them, shift select the nerve surface, and go to skin, bind, skin, smooth bind. And just before I hit apply, um, we can leave the settings as they are now, so I'm quite happy with them. And just hit apply, just so we can get that skin in there, so we can start to see this moving about and how it's going to move so you can see here how the bulk of this is going to really work this bulk controller down here so even before we actually start to rig this up we can sort of see how this is going to be moving the character about so in the next tutorial we're just going to repeat what we've done with the antennas creating those controls and matching them up and because we've actually got quite a lot of the rig in there, the spine, the antennas and the arms, we could actually just do a quick skin just to see how it's going to move the character, just as a test.